Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss prospective financial statements. Prospectives means futuristic financial statements. Now, why are we learning about prospective financial statements? We have to put this into a context. Well, this is part of your auditing and attestation course. And specifically, prospective financial information or prospective financial statements is a subject matter is a subject matter that's subject to some sort of an attestation. Well, we have three levels of service that we can provide. We can provide examination, review engagement, and agreed upon procedures. Here, what we're working with is under the state, under the statements on standards for attestation engagement. But specifically, now we're going to start to apply those service level on various subject matters, starting with prospective. For a prospective financial statements, what can we do? We can perform an examination. We can perform an agreed upon procedures. We cannot perform a review. Now, once we go through the um, through the explanation, what are prospective financial information? I will explain why a review does not work. But you should know what a review engagement is. So a review don't work with prospective financial statements. Now, we have two types of prospective financial statements. We could have a financial forecast and we could have a financial projection. And you need to be familiar with both. What is a financial forecast? Financial forecast is a prospective financial statement present to the best of the responsible party's knowledge and belief an entity expected financial position. And notice what I did. I highlighted in yellow expected financial position and specifically expected in red. The results of the operation, cash flow, so on and so forth. Simply put, a forecast, think of the weather. The weather person, they will try to forecast, try to tell you to the best of their knowledge what's, what's expected to happen. Rain, sunshine, cold, nice weather, whatever the forecast is. Based on their best assumption, reflecting their assumption, what they expect to exist and the course of action it expect to take. Simply put, they're giving you their best guess or their most likely scenario. And this is what a financial forecast is. In the real world, for example, a company might forecast, an airline company, air travel might grow at 3%. How would they come up to that forecast? Well, they would look at prior period. They would look at current financial conditions. They would look at their pipeline. And they can guess that air travel should grow this summer around 3%. Now, bear in mind that if if we perform an examination on financial forecast, generally speaking, it's for general use. It means if you perform an examination, remember, you can perform an examination, you can perform an agreed upon procedure. If it's an examination, the general rule is it's for a general use. So there's some exceptions, but it's for the general use. If you perform an agreed upon procedure, it's for limited use. And again, agreed upon procedures, we talked about this, it's for limited use because it's between you between two parties agreeing on certain terms, third parties or others should not be involved. That's the assumption. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now, what is a financial projection? Notice, it's very similar with a slight modification. It's a prospective financial statement that present to the to the best of the responsible party's knowledge and belief, given, this is what we're adding, one or more hypothetical assumptions, an entity expected financial statement, financial position, result of operation, and cash flow. What we are adding to the financial projection is one or more hypothetical assumptions. Here, we are using assumptions. If this happened, this would happen. So now we're not using our best guess. We are making hypothetical assumptions. For example, an, air, uh, an airline company, they can say, what if, what would happen if someone find a cure for COVID? If someone find a cure for COVID, 
maybe we can say air, air travel would go up by 10%. But this is a hypothetical assumption. It's basically on uh, banking on some event that may or may not happen. It's a hypothetical assumption. So that's the difference between financial projection and financial forecast. Financial forecast, you are more realistic. Think of it this way. You're giving your best guess or most likely scenario. Here, a financial projection is based on the responsible party's assumption reflecting condition it exists, it expect would exist, and the course of action it, ex it expect it would take in, giving one or more hypothetical. Simply put, hypothetical assumptions, basically think of it, it's using your wild imagination. You can, you can hypothetically assume anything, but that's not what a financial forecast is. Assumption, uh, hypothetical assumption are related to financial projection. Now, since they are crazy or uh, imagine, uh, wild imagination, they're not crazy, but the point is, I'm trying to show you it's outside the box. They, limit, they have a limited use for, if you have any examination or AUP, it's a limited use. Why? Because you are using assumptions or hypothetical assumptions that only specific parties might understand. Therefore, you limit the use of the report. What are the preconditions for projection or forecast? For projection or forecast, and I'm going to be focusing on the same terms again and again and again. Agree to disclose significant assumptions because in both of them, you are making assumptions. Now, in one, you are making more wild hypothetical assumptions, but you are still making assumption in both. For projection, remember, projection is more wild. Identify which of the assumptions are hypothetical. You also want to comment on the limitation of the projection's usefulness. How useful are they? What are their limitation? Now, bear in mind, as a precondition, if you have no written assertions from the party, no examination. You cannot examine something if they don't provide you written assertions about what they want to do. Simply put, you just know no examination. You can't perform it. Planning, what do you do during planning? You learn about the entity's industry. That's part of the planning process if you are performing an examination. Remember, examination is more like an audit. Agreed upon procedure is basically private, private negotiation, private party uh, treatment. Evaluate the factors underlying the prospective financial information for reasonableness. Remember, you are looking at the future. So you want to evaluate what are they telling you? Are these reasonable assumptions that they're making? You just have to evaluate those. When you perform the procedures, you have to evaluate the support for significant assumption individually and look, looking at the big picture as well. Remember, you are dealing with the future. You are dealing with assumptions. So you're always, when you are dealing with financial statement projection or forecast, you are dealing with assumptions. So are significant assumptions supported by preponderance of the information? So we said what's preponderance of the information, it means is there a more than 51% chance the assumption might happen? If you're looking at a forecast, are there reasonably objective basis for the forecast? Are they reasonable? What if they said, you know, the economy is going to grow at 10% and there's no way they are making an assumption, you and I know the economy is growing at 2%. Is that, is that reasonable? For key factor identified, for example, let's talk about the air travel well, they have to look at the overall picture. They cannot make wild assumptions. Do they have sufficient, sufficiently objective assumption? You have to check their assumptions. That's what you are doing. For projection, again, this is the more wild stuff. Are the hypothetical assumption consistent with the purpose of the projections? Okay, they are making hypothetical assumptions. Okay, that's fine. But why are they making those hypothetical assumptions? Is it for the purpose of the projection? And what's the purpose of the projection? Or is it the purpose for misleading something? Okay. No need to find support for the hypothetical assumptions, but you need to know why are they making those hypothetical assumptions? Are they in line for, with their purpose, the purpose of the projection? You also want to obtain written representation from the client. For example, in an examination of a forecast, you want them to know the forecast present the expected financial statement and reflect expected condition. You want them to tell you this. This is evidence to you that they're admitting to what they're telling you is what they are telling you. The underlying assumptions are reasonable and, and suitably supported. You want them to tell you this. This is what we mean by written representation. Just tell me what you're telling me in writing. That's what we're doing. And the range selected is not in a way misleading. So if you are making a forecast, well, you can select the data or you can select a certain time frame to mislead. So you want them to tell you the data that they gave you for the forecast is not purposely 
misleading. The data is not misleading. In case of a projection, well, in addition to the three above, remember you have hypothetical assumptions in that projection, identify the hypothetical assumptions. They have to give you this in a written representation. That's it's important. Describe the limitation of the usefulness of the presentation. You know, okay, we're, we're talking, we're doing this projection. What are the limitation of the usefulness? Again, no written representation. It, it could amount to a scope limitation. It could, could amount to a withdrawal. Now, the best way to look at this a little bit further is to look at the end product. And the end product is a report. So we'd look at two reports or three reports that, that's dealing with projected financial statements, examination, and agreed upon procedures that will summarize for us the end product and thus teaching us a little bit more about what is an examination, what is an agreed upon procedure when it comes to projected financial statements. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs. That's going to help you understand this topic better. This topic is tested on the CPA exam and most audit courses, they cover it and others don't. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.